Hello, it's James here. This week I'm going to show you how I made this blinky ball. It's got a gyro and an accelerometer in it so it can react to motion. It's got various different modes. I've also put all the CAD and code on GitHub so you can make your own. So let's get started. So I've made my ball structure, which is just these sticks, which you can have LEDs all over them, stuck into the caps at the top and bottom. And these are just a push fit at the moment, which means I can take them in and out really easily so we can get to the electronics, which of course has to be in the middle, and we can work on that and wire it all up. So I just need to cover all my sticks with LEDs and get those wired. And I've got this big strip here of APA 102s, which are dot star LEDs. So as you can see, there are four contacts on these LED strips. So unlike NeoPixels that just have grounds and five volts and the data, these have a clock and a data. And that means they don't use interrupts on the Arduino. So we can use other devices that do use interrupts like servos at the same time without the interrupt conflict causing any issues. So we need to daisy chain the, all of these strips. So the ins go to the outs and then we'll get one long strip of LEDs. And to help with that, I've made this stick, which has got a slot in it and a hole all the way through. And that neatly fits in the middle there so that we can run the wires down because we need to go from top to bottom on each one. We can also use that stick to mount the electronics on. All right, so that's all wired up. We've got one wire here, which goes to the first data in, then the output of that, the data out, goes to the next in, out to in, out to in, out to in. So if we go all the way round, we should find there's one with no out that doesn't go anywhere. And that's the one we can pop out so that we can get inside to put the electronics in. And the rest of the electronics look like this. So yes, it's an Arduino Mega 2650 because it's got lots of interfaces on, which means we can interface to lots of other things in the future. So I've got a power switch mounted on the 3D printed board there two mode switches, which are just momentary press switches. And we're gonna power that from a five volt regulator. It's one of those turning G um, battery eliminator circuits. So that'll power everything off this 11.1 volt LiPo. So that's all good. And we're also gonna put an MPU 6050 inertial measurement unit in there as well. So I need to wire a few things up then we can stick that in the middle attached to our tower. I've also fitted my inertial measurement unit, which is connected to the I squared C pins, it's connected to five volts, and it's also connected to pin two, which is an interrupt pin. So that does use interrupts, which interrupts the code to say when the buffer's ready to be read. So it's quite lucky that we're not using interrupts on the LED strips. I've just put some test code on that tests the LED strips. So if we power that on now, then we should see all of those strips going through RGB and illuminating and going all the way around. So that seems to be working, which means all the wiring is in place. So now there's quite a lot of things we can do with that code. The first thing I'm gonna do in the code setup though is calibrate the inertial measurement unit with a calibration routine. So let's have a look at that. In order to make the IMU work, we need Jeff Roberg's I squared C devlib. So have a look on GitHub for that. I'll put the link in the description. You need to clone or download this repository to get all the libraries, but one we're interested in is the Arduino library for the MPU 6050. So there are some examples in here. We're gonna be using the DMP example, which combines the gyro and accelerometer and actually gives you the values in a nice envelope without having to do any of your own complementary filter or anything like that. First of all though, we need to run the IMU0 sketch, which is a calibration sketch, which gives you some values for each axis to put back into your own sketch so that the zeros are all calibrated and everything's nice and lovely. So I've put my IMU level as you can see there and you leave it on for a few minutes to warm up and then you run the calibration sketch and that puts some values out like this. You put those out to the serial terminal 
and eventually also is finished and give you some final values. So this is the output of my calibration, which I've just copied and pasted into Notepad there to sort out the formatting. And you can see you've got six axis and each one's got some values. So I've never really worked out which values you're supposed to use, but I'm using the first ones for each of the axes there and I've just put those into my sketch. So there's a section here for gyro offsets and accelerometer offsets and that seems to work pretty well. So now if we open a serial uh, monitor, we should see that we've got some values there and they should, after it's settled, um, all go down to zero provided my um, table's level where I calibrated it. It's normally pretty good. We've got one degree off there. In fact, one of those is the yaw, which is rotation. And then we should have um, pitch and roll there and you can see those two numbers changing so let's just uh, go and open a plotter we should see a graph in fact which is a bit easier to see what's going on so the yaw is offset of course and that's uh, zero when you reset it but then it um, flips around from zero all the way through to 180 and minus 180. And the other two, of course, are the uh, pitch and roll there. So uh, that seems to work pretty well, at least good enough for our purposes uh, for controlling the lights. So now I want to sort out the buttons I fitted so they select mode. So I've got this little bit of code here which does the mode handling. Obviously it reads the digital buttons. And then essentially what happens is when you press one, it makes the mode the mode plus one, and when you press the other one, it makes it minus one, so we can scroll up and down. There's an added bit of code here, which is the debounce, which basically sets a flag, and it doesn't allow the mode to change until you let go of the button and press it again. Then it sets the flag back to zero, otherwise those button presses get ignored. And that means otherwise you'd press and hold the button, or if you press the button for a few microseconds, obviously it would um, keep scrolling, adding a number on every time the code loop goes around. So you'd end up incrementing the, the mode really quick and you wouldn't be able to control it. So that's the switch debounce. So now if we go and look at the uh, serial monitor, we can look at those values. So I've now got them on the end here. These are the two buttons and the last one is the mode. So if I press this one, we should be able to see that mode counting up all the way to five. And if I press and hold the bottom one, you should see nothing happens until I let go and I press it again. Then it goes down and that goes down to three and it will go all the way down to zero. And that makes it really controllable. So now we need to sort out the LEDs and check all of this lot runs together. So now I've added in the basic strip test from the Adafruit um, library example. So this basically is this bit of code here, which was the first bit of code I ran. And that colors all the strips in RGB one after the other. And if I bring up my serial terminal, then we can see we've still got those values there and we've got the sort of uh, your roll and tilt there. So we still get all of those IMU values that we can integrate later. So for now, this is in mode zero. So obviously we've got here, if the mode is zero, and if I increment that mode to one, it now does something else. So let's press that up button. So you should be able to see the one appearing there on the end because we've uh, gone to mode one. And now you should see slowly, it populates all of those LED strips. And now all of them, cycle through RGB, which is quite pretty. And the way I've done that is to say if the mode is one, then I've basically created a function for each strip. I'd rather have one function and just piped in the start and end values for each of the strips. Obviously the first one is zero to 13, next one is 13 to 26 and so on, but that didn't work for some reason. So for now there's eight functions down at the bottom here, which basically run that exact same code um, with different start and end positions. And that's all it's doing is going through those one at a time. So now we've got the capability to do that, we can do something that reacts to the inertial measurement unit. So in the name of simplification, I've created another function here called set all, and that takes the start, the finish LEDs and a color, and it just does a for loop and sets that pixel color. It doesn't do a strip show, so you have to do that in the code that's calling it. So up here, we've got a even more horrendous looking if statements when it's in mode two. And basically depending on the yaw of the ball, it will set different LEDs. And so uh, basically these are in strips of 13 all the way through the positive direction and negative direction. So let's see what the result of that is. So here it is in mode one where we've got all the LEDs on, but if we go one up on our mode switch, it should turn all the LEDs out. And now of course, if I turn it, which is the yaw, it should color in those LEDs all the way around. So it's a bit like a dial you turn where they slowly go on and come off. If I turn it the other way, then they all turn blue, look at that and it's pretty responsive. 
So now I've created two other modes using the other axis of the inertial measurement unit. And so if I tilt it this way, we can see this green light is on. And basically the lights come on whichever direction you tilt it all the way around. I've also done something better than that in the next mode, which is this, which is like trying to keep water in a vase. So you should see this level all the way around. But if I tilt it, you should see these illuminate and the back ones should go out all the way around. So it's a bit like a water level. So I'll let you look at the last piece of code yourself. You can find all the CAD and code for this on GitHub. The link is in the description to the video below. And don't forget that all of my major projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live stream with me and all my videos early. All right, that's all for now. 